So uh, I think uh, what you might hear now will be a little bit out of your comfort zone, uh, but I think it might help uh, because, because we have a lot of these artificial things. At a certain point, Donald Trump is a much more honest liar than we are. Um, we are using three million tons of palm oil and we, and we, uh, for, bi for biodiesel in Europe, where one hectare of rainforest has 7,000 tons of carbon in it and one hectare palm oil plantation has 60 tons. So we are, then I talked to Mr. Barroso and he says, oh, Professor Braungart, we will now only take certified palm oil. So if you make the wrong things perfect, then they are perfectly wrong. We are using 21% of our valuable agricultural land to grow biofuels. How ridiculous when we import at the same time the size of France to feed our farm animals. This is perverse. And I can give you endless examples. We have 64 chemicals being banned in children's toys, but I find more than 600 dangerous chemicals in children's toys. So we do a lot of alibi. It's called, I call it an ecologism. It doesn't help the ecology, it only keeps us busy. So in this case, Donald Trump is a more honest liar than we are. Uh, so when we pretend to do something, uh, let's take simple things. Yeah, you have all these Nespresso capsules out to, to drinking coffee. I can clearly measure aluminum in all the coffee which you have in there. Yeah. Aluminum is neurotoxic. How can you do this? You, we have measurable concentrations of aluminum in all the coffees. Yeah. How can we do this? Yeah, if it would be steel, we would not have a problem with it. So I would do a little campaign with George Clooney, which says, Nespresso, forget it. Because all the people who suffer from Alzheimer's had measurable uh, high concentrations of aluminum in their, neurotox in, neuros in their brain. Yeah, so what I want to say is this, this industry, steel industry, is not really uh, looking for the real potential. And even when we call it circular economy, it's not really enough. Uh, steel and the other metals are the only true circular materials. But I would not call it circular because this is linear thinking in cycles. And a digital world doesn't know circles. It's a space, it's a sphere. And I want to talk to you about it. Let's talk about the future. Right now I see the steel industry a little more in a way, oh yes, we are all mature industry and the others will take over. No, it's not. This is a, the future for steel is just beginning, and we definitely need to look for that. First of all, the indoor air quality in, in a building is about three to eight times worse than outside urban air. This is a carpet. Steel is not stinking. Steel is not off gassing. Yeah, asthma is by far the most relevant children's disease. There's a real benefit, but I want to show you as well, we should not romanticize nature. What I'm doing, I'm a chemist, so I put things in glass boxes, and I look what is off gassing. And these, these are high, really small peaks compared to children's toys, yeah? or to, to compare to other household appliances, to washing machines, etc. So uh, I want to show you something else. People say, oh, we want a natural material. Yeah? Uh, this is a Scandinavian carpet. Yeah? Uh, uh, God never designed the sheep for the carpet, yeah? and, it's not and the sheep is not designed to be red wine resistant. So actually, we call it 100% wool, yeah? It, and it's t basically a Teflon carpet with some, with some wool inside, yeah? So you're never in touch with the wool, but you call it a natural material. How honest are we actually? So the, I'm analyzing human milk, muscles milk now for 28 years. There's not one sample which you could sell as drinking milk. I find more than 2,900 chemicals in, and the fastest growing peaks are the ones from flame retardants amazingly, so um, that's amazing. So steel doesn't accumulate in human milk. Yeah, so why don't we think about the positive aspects? And sure, I'm a little bit controversial here. Uh, there are 300,000 people out to try to be more efficient. How sick, yeah, resource efficiency. Yeah, why do we have all this plastic problem? Because we, we use plastic so efficiently that it's so low weight that it's not worth to collect it anymore. Yeah. Yeah, so this doesn't make sense. Efficiency makes the wrong things perfect and then they're perfectly wrong. We think that we are protecting the environment yeah, uh, when we are just minimizing little damage. We said protect the environment, reduce your energy bill, reduce your water consumption, 
We are not protecting, we are only minimizing damage. If I tell you, please protect your child, beat your child only five times instead of 10 times, you said, what an idiot. Yeah? So you're not protecting, only minimizing damage. In this logic, for example, Poland has been protecting the environment so much better than Belgium just by inefficiency. Yeah, they couldn't destroy all the wetlands because the system was so inefficient. So don't optimize wrong things. When I was a child, a cow was producing 5,000 liters of milk. Yeah. And yeah, today, in Wageningen, in Netherlands, we are up to 20,000 liters. Should I squeeze another 1,000 liters of this poor cow just to be more efficient? Shall I add another pair of legs to this poor sheep just to be more efficient? Yeah. This is Vietnam. Yeah. The whole city is plastered of Saigon with Accenture posters to be more efficient. Yeah. This doesn't make sense. It, we need to say what is the right thing instead of optimizing wrong things. Yeah. So we need to ask what is healthy nutrition, not how to optimize existing agriculture. We talk about carbon dioxide. And can you imagine when you grow corn in Europe, you're losing between 11 and 30 tons of topsoil per hectare in a year. This is perverse. Yeah. And then we say, oh, you still has a carbon footprint. Instead of saying, hey, where is the carbon based? The carbon is in soil, not in oil. Yeah, so, and we destroy our topsoil to make biofuels. This is ridiculous. I can give you endless examples for that. We take things, we make them, and we put them into landfills. And we think when we make incinerators, we deter thermal recycling. And to, to start with the industry here, yeah. You'd call it recycling, yeah. And the, a friend, a Belgium company, Yumicor, is the most advanced, but they only can get nine out of 41 elements out of it. They call it recycling. Isn't Donald Trump more honest? Yeah. So this is no recycling. All the rare elements are all left behind. We, we lose them all. No indium, no gallium, no germanium. It's all lost, yeah. And we call it recycling. This is sick, yeah. This is why we, and look at this here. We have this car, which is, a Mercedes has 46 different steel alloys in it, yeah. <laughs> and what does this industry do? <laughs> they make building steel out of it. How perverse, yeah. How can you tell your children what you're doing and you call it circular when you make building steel out of 46 different steel alloys? This is not only funny, it's like if you have a nice cow and you make hamburgers out of it, yeah. That doesn't make sense. You need to say, hey, what? this is massive downcycling. We lose all these rare elements with that. And this is the biggest environmental problem. Yeah. When, we, when I was a child, the copper ore had 3.5%. Today, we are down to 0.1%, and we call it a copper ore. There's one copper mill in Hamburg, Germany, which makes four times more waste than all the municipal waste stream of Europe, just by one copper mill. Yeah. And then we do plastic bags against paper bags. Yeah? And the European Union is doing, instead of 200 pl paper, uh, plastic bags, we reduce it 10 years to 40 plastic bags. How nice. Yeah? My god, how honest is Donald Trump compared to that? So what we do with this, we lose all these elements, and we call it recycling. Why is the steel industry doing this? It has massive consequences. When I was in, in Turkey in 99, there were 20,000 people killed by an earthquake. We found up to 2.2% of copper in the, st in the building steel. As you know, when, when, you, when the steel concentration has more than 0.5% copper, the steel is, gets brittle. It breaks like an osteoporosis bone. So it's a steel poison. But because of more efficient use of copper, the, efficient, the components of copper are so small that it's not possible to collect them out and uh, separate them out of the building steel. And in 99, the United States were exporting 7 million cars into Turkey because in the United States it's illegal to recycle building steel uh, uh, out of uh, vehicle steel because of the earthquake problem in San Francisco. Isn't it amazing? So, and, the, and the Turkish people one-to-one -one used it for building steel because they had so much vehicle steel. And what we do in Western Europe, we are diluting the, the vehicle steel with virgin steel to get the copper concentration down. But we lose all these rare elements as well. This is called recycling? My God, hey, how can you really tell anybody that this is recycling? So this is traditionally cradle to grave thinking, reducing, avoiding, minimizing resource efficiency, whatever. You make your customer your enemy. It's about sustainability. Did you, <laughs> sustainability, an, another joke, yeah? So if I ask you, how is your relationship with your wife? Would you say sustainable? Yeah, I'm really sorry for you. That's just the minimum, yeah? So sustainability is not enough. And as well, it makes your customer your enemy. It says, well, if you don't buy it, it's even better. You really need it. 
No, it's about cradle to cradle. You need to say, hey, we already have 30%. And I'm here because the steel industry is the industry with the biggest potential for a cradle to cradle economy, but not a circular economy. Yeah, it's just this linear thinking like London Eye. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not in a digital world. It's just primitive. So it's not about efficiency, it's about effectiveness. When I'm here in Brussels, I need to go to Amsterdam, it doesn't help me to go e efficiently into Madrid, or? So I need to say what is the right thing first, in opti instead of optimizing the existing stuff. So here, let's think about a positive impact, not about being less bad. We, for, if being less bad, we have far too many people. We need to learn how to support the other species as well. Look at the cherry tree in spring. Yeah, it's all nutrient. It's nutrient management for the biosphere and the technosphere. And steel is the ideal technical nutrient. There's nothing better than this one. And its use is definitely the right energy sources. And all these life cycle assessments here are driven by energy. This is why steel was left out because we thought it takes too much energy. But the energy problem we will fix. The material problem is far more critical. So, and it celebrates diversity, it needs different uh, aspects. So in cradle to cradle, there is no waste anymore. Everything is a nutrient, either for the biosphere or the technosphere. Shoes, shoe soles, bra uh, brake pads, tires need to be designed for the biosphere. Half of the uh, uh, polymer uh, micro plastic particles in the North Sea is tire abrasion because we optimized the wrong things. There are 470 different chemicals being used in making tires. Now the tires last twice as long. And my friends from Accenture will say, oh, this is more efficient now. Yeah, but it's stupid because we optimized the wrong thing. Before the rubber hits the road, it stays here. Now you inhale it, you pick it up, you get asthma, you get bronchitis from the stuff because it's the wrong thing. So shoe soles, tire dust, brake pads need to be designed for the biosphere. Things, things which are consumed, the things which are just services, like a washing machine, like a car, like a, uh, uh, like a video recorder, like a TV set needs to be designed for the technosphere. There's not such a thing like waste anymore. In a digital world, you need to define what it is. So forget about sustainability. It's about innovation, quality, and beauty. A product which becomes waste just has a quality problem. This is why it's so successful in Japan, because people understand total quality management much more. When people cannot make a living, it's not beautiful as well. Innovation is never sustainable. Yeah, otherwise, it would not be innovation. Europe is leave, it's lagging behind because of sustainability, because they're optimizing their existing stuff instead of saying what is the right thing. Yeah, so uh, the mobile phone was not sustainable for the ones who had stationary phones before, or wasn't it? I can give you endless examples for that. Innovation is never sustainable. We are optimizing the wrong things, and we call it sustainability. So let's look, look how to make it differently. It's a little video. It needs diversity. It's an European thinking, American spirit, uh, Asian uh, uh, way to really think in big, bigger context and southern perspectives to enjoy life. Look at, at a cherry tree in spring. No reduction, no avoidance, no minimization. But all the materials are beneficial. The cherry tree only makes a handful of cherries, actually, but with hundreds of blossoms. And all the materials are designed to go back into the biological system. I think we're not too many. It depends what those nine billion people are doing. <laughs> the cherry tree makes soil, makes oxygen, cleans the air. It's not toxic, it's not dangerous. No, it's the opposite. It's all nutrition. And what we do, we make the wrong things perfect, and then they are perfectly wrong. If you think about our ants and termites, there's four times as many, but they don't cause the problems because they produce nutrients and not waste. They convert biomass into nutrients, so why shouldn't we be able to do the same? Cradle to cradle divides products into two spheres, a technical and a biological one. We have to redesign products. On the technical side, we have materials such as metals that can be used forever, like in chairs and wash machines. The biological side, we have products that dissolve back into nature, like cosmetics or the natural fiber textiles. If these two spheres stay separate, the concept of waste will be obsolete. So instead of reducing our footprint, let's rethink for a positive footprint. 
cradle to cradle, now it becomes a friendly tsunami. Yeah. And hundreds and hundreds of young designers are doing cradle to cradle now. I want that the money I give for a product brings positive impact for the society. I'm optimistic because I think everything is going in that direction. It's never too late to stop to make stupid things. Yeah, watch <laughs> your head turns full circle. So this means we need to reinvent things, but it's not eco design. How stupid. It's either good design or bad design. That's it. If you make eco design, you make another niche. And it's not about producer responsibility. This is a feudalistic term. You know, we don't need trade unions. We feel responsible for our people. No, it's not about responsibility. It's a different mindset behind it. So th then people make it a biological cycle and technical cycle, like the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. But it's not a cycle, it's a space. The key thing for steel are the coatings, the prints, the inks which are on it. And right now, the steel smelters, electric smelters, are some of the biggest point sources of toxic substances in the world. Because the steel industry needs to come with a catalog of coatings which can be used and pigments which can be used. Otherwise, you only make downcycling, always make heavy pollution. So as a heavy, healthy printing initiative, you could elegantly do so. Carlsberg now makes cans which you can, can burn off without a filter except a dust filter. And then you can use it, it, the material again for the same purpose. Um, in, in 2020, Maersk will not have one gram of waste anymore because it will be material passports, but it's not circular. Yeah? Then you would do the same ship over and over again? No, it's not. Even they show it like that. Maersk Line will implement the most comprehensive cradle-to-cradle -cradle passport ever seen for the new giant triple E ships. The cradle-to-cradle -cradle passport will identify each and every nut and bolt of the giant 60,000-ton ships, making vastly improved recycling possible for most materials as well as safe disposal for the rest. The materials of the ships will all be marked and numbered, separating high and low-grade steel, copper wiring, hazardous materials and waste. Based on the sorting, it will be possible to reuse nearly all materials for new ships, making dangerous and polluting scrapping a thing of the past. So this is how we can use 40 years of blame and shame in Europe as an innovation opportunity. We can make carpets which clean the air, not just being not toxic. You're buying floor packaging insurance instead of selling a carpet. Uh, we have office furniture now, steel case, the world's largest company now has all materials cradle to cradle. So why don't we do this for the whole steel applications? We have building materials, we use this across the industry. So we need to think about a building like a buffalo. Uh, if you continue with efficiency, steel will be replaced by textiles. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, or it will be replaced by carbon fibers. So it seems to be more efficient, but it's like if you make an, a, a ship, a, an airplane, which you allow to start, which you don't know how to land it. So steel is superior to all of this, but you need to do like you do this with this buffalo, that you have specific answers. You could make one car, we did a, a rough estimation for that, out of stainless steel, where you could 90% of the steel could be stainless steel. And the stainless steel, we would just sell as a service to be used for 15 years, and it could belong to an investor which holds the, 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 the steel, it would make a Mercedes 4,000 euros cheaper because nobody needs the steel. It no needs the service of using it. So it needs different business models there. Mr. Potocznik is completely right about it. It needs in, uh, different buildings. We can make buildings which support life instead of being less bad. We can get extra space by using the walls yeah, and you can make buildings where indoor air quality is better than outside air. Right now it's three to eight times worse. So why does the European Union not say, we want to have buildings where indoor air quality is better than outside air? This would give my young students an, a positive opportunity. If I, I tell them, oh, let's be 10% less evil, they don't want to be evil. This selfie generation wants to be proud of what they are doing. 
So we can make buildings as material banks, and this where steel plays a key role in it, because this steel, if it's handled properly, if it's coated properly, can be used endlessly. But don't do this life cycle stuff. Yeah? Even my students do life cycle of a beverage container. Did you ever see life in a beverage container? This is ridiculous. It's just a fraud. Yeah? So it means material passports. So the industry is just beginning. It needs reversible design for that. It needs a data management. Sure, it needs business models, it needs policies, and it needs case studies for that. But we are at the beginning. You can you imagine I was at BMW and they, they showed me the new factory of the future. <laughs> Nobody needs robots. They buy 200 robots. Nobody needs a robot. I need welding points. So why don't they just buy 100 million welding points? Then I can use the best material, not the cheapest thinking stuff. And I don't earn money with by reprogramming my stuff. People buy solar panels. We lost the European solar industry because the European Union is not able to, to come up with business models. Yeah. Nobody needs a solar panel. Like Yanis uh, Trochnik said this morning, but I can give you more details because I'm in that business. I'm not talking like a politician. I'm talking to you, why do people buy solar panels when they only need to harvest photons? Nobody needs it. Uh, we analyzed a European solar panel. It has 93% of its capacity after 19 years. Yeah. The Chinese solar panel lost half of the capacity in the first five years. Even at 30% cheaper at the beginning of over per kilowatt hour, over 20 years, the European brand is 40% cheaper yeah, per kilowatt hour. Yeah. So why don't we develop, why do we sell the stuff? And they call it a producer responsibility. I don't, I don't want to have a, a, a TV set. I don't want to have a washing machine. I need things as a service. This could be the first cradle-to-cradle -cradle car, and it could be made where the metals are services in that. We need code codings. We need to put the information in the, in the coding that we can get the materials out. And then, as like David said, we need to get the components out of this. Yeah. So why don't we have 3,000 times of washing instead of selling a washing machine? Then we can replace 20% of the outdated components. But it's not about durability, not about a prolonging the life of a product. Yeah. If I give you a computer and said, oh, this computer lasts 50 years, you would say, what an idiot. Yeah. Because so a washing machine should not be used for longer than eight years, because then it's outdated. Then 80% of the components can be reused, like David pointed it out, but 20% need to be replaced. So it's a defined use period. You pay per wash instead. But the European Union needs to come up with it. Otherwise, they will all the use all this, lose all the industry. Yeah, the industry will disappear. We will be, just be a nice museum for India and China, which is a nice role as well. OK. Yeah. So here is where steel is needed to grow algae. It's 80 times more productive than growing corn. Yeah. So why don't we do so? 80 times on one. Yeah, this is steel for the future. We need to re recover the, the carbon from, from the air. Why don't we say in 2100, we will have the same carbon dioxide level which we had in 1900? Then my students would have a positive challenge, not reducing. <laughs> Did you see Brussels wants to be carbon neutral? How perverse. Did you ever see a carbon neutral tree? So you want to be more stupid than a tree? A tree is always carbon positive. Think about you come home and said, oh, I'm child neutral today. How sick. And we speak, take all this stupid language and we continue and our thinking goes on with that. This doesn't make sense. We need to make buildings like trees, buildings which clean the water, clean the air. Next week, where Janusz Potocznik will keep, keep the, do the opening speech, will be a cradle-to-cradle -cradle conference in Lüneburg with about 1,500 young people. Because people don't want to be less bad. They want to be good. This, this young selfie generation wants to be proud of what they're doing. Yeah? It, it's for them, recognition in social networks is more important than money. Yeah? If you're making waste, you're just an idiot. That's enough. Yeah. You don't need even ethics for that. A little self-esteem is enough. So if you don't want to be stupid, you have the right material. If I would go to the PVC industry and said, oh, let's optimize PVC to make it a little less bad, yeah, then I would be the same corrupt person. No, I'm here because steel has the highest potential. And I want you to think about a cradle-to-cradle -cradle economy which goes beyond circular economy, which really makes celebrates life, celebrates the human footprint on this planet instead of minimizing damage. For being less bad, we are too many people on this planet. EPI is a research institute in different countries. And when, if you want, just we can 
make a difference. Thank you very much.